All right, Redeemer, this is week five of Worth It. This is our final time that you'll gather together centered around these conversation topics. We've had five weeks of sermons and five weeks of discussion in our gospel communities as well as our, our booklet that we're going through and hope that all of it has served you well. You, you may have missed one or two of these along the way, but tonight it's gonna pull together all of the things that you've talked about and things you've heard about in sermons and it's really gonna get around one central idea and that is, is that, is Jesus worth it to you? That, that's the real fundamental question. I would make a case that a definitive answer on that is Jesus first, which we talked about at the very beginning, but is he worth it? Is he more valuable than all other things? Is he worth any kind of sacrifice? Is he worth any kind of expenditure? Is he worth any kind of obedience? That's actually, a definitive answer to that is actually the thing that would cause us to be a gospel-centered, missional family of disciples making disciples, and here's why. If Jesus is worth it, then we're gonna say, okay, then the gospel-centered piece of God's grace towards us is gonna be more important than anything, and then we do, we do want Jesus to form us into a family, and we do want to be sent on mission, both here in Lubbock and then extending all the way out uh, to making Jesus known among the nations, to planting churches in college towns, to reaching students that are in our city, reaching our friends in our city, and, um, and then to be disciples that are making disciples. Like, why would you wanna do all that if Jesus is not supremely valuable to you, if he's not worth it? And the answer is you won't. And perhaps that's why we may see areas in our life where we would say that Jesus is really important, but really, you know, you look at your bank account and you're like, not really. And you look at your time priorities and you realize, not really. And, and I've had that happen all the time in my life. And then you may even see some growth that you may have seen reflected in your finances, reflected in your time, where it does appear that Jesus is increasingly worth it to you in how you actually live and not just in what you say. You're gonna pull all this together tonight in your conversation, and I think I'm most interested in you pulling together in addition to what you'll hear and talk about in Matthew 13 and in Philippians 3, that I think it's gonna be really important for you to pull together all that we've heard in the last few weeks. If this is your first time to a gospel community, don't sweat it, you can take what you hear tonight and pull all of it together and say, okay, how has worth it in the scriptures that we've seen in the middle of it, in the conversations you've had in your gospel communities, how has it encouraged you? How has it challenged you? And do you feel like that there's any action that's different in you and, and hear this, not just because the sermon series, because a sermon series is a sermon series, but more importantly, the truth in the Bible that Jesus is supremely valuable and his kingdom supremely valuable, that he's worth it. How has that realization caused you to change what you give, change how you spend your time, change how you serve, change how you gather with the church, change maybe even how you obey the Lord in a couple of areas that you've previously been disobedient on? I don't know what those things would be, be for you, and I think it'd be really interesting and challenging just to share in a very raw way where you feel pressed right now and challenged and even encouraged where perhaps there's been some growth in obedience and belief that, um, that where you feel affirmed in that, that um, share those things with one another. I think that would be very important. And, um, and I think that um, as we discuss some of these things here, uh, that to even talk about what your, some of your hopes and dreams, when you think about your life, when you think about Redeemer, what are some of your hopes that would be expressed that is Jesus is worth it? What would it look like in your friendships? And what would it look like in your family? And what would it look like financially? What would it look like if Redeemer, corporately, if we all, from elders, staff, members, if we all view Jesus as just supremely valuable and worth everything, what would it look like? And how might Sundays be different? How might giving be different? How might obedience be different? How might our willingness to share the gospel with our friends who aren't Christians. I just think it'd be really interesting just to talk about, I mean, would, if we all came in viewing it this way, what would this gospel community look like tonight? How might our relationships look, um, you know, different? Or might they look like they already are because the Lord is worth it like that to this gospel community already? I don't know the answers to that. My guess is it'll be really vary person to person, group to group but I, I wish I could be a fly on the wall while you talk about it. So thanks for leaning into it. And uh, I'm gonna trust that the Lord's gonna do great things through his word as he changes us and causes us to reflect um, that reality of Christ being worth it and supreme in all things.